Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. We are doing quarantine questions today. Uh, please welcome back Connor. Let's jump right in. Dante, yes or no? So I put this in as kind of like an analog multiverse of digital multis. It doesn't have to be Dante. But me and you are lovers of Dante. So, yeah, we uh, are. Um, let's talk about Dante or digital multicores kind of vibe. I feel that when it works, it's brilliant. 100%. When it doesn't work... Uh, when it doesn't work is always the time where you're pressed for time or you don't have anyone else to look at it. Yeah. Um, or the thing it's doing, I don't have any experience of. You ring your guy who's yeah, yeah. prepped it in the warehouse or whatever it is. I ring the you, guy who owns you the ring kit. me. I'm like, what yeah. is going I'm like, on? I've never seen that issue before. Yeah, yeah. I just had two issues recently where, um, again, uh, CL5, out front CL5 um, on monitors. Yeah. Um, passive splits and we had... Um, Two lots of two uh, Rios and got everything connected at front of house. And I came down to see the Rios and the two Rios on, on front of house were solid green, solid amber. Yeah. And I was like, that's really strange. I've Never see a not... solid amber normally. Solid definitely green, not seen yes, that one before. It's always flickering, isn't it? So I rung the guy who, um, who uh, we'd been given the contact for and he said, no, not heard of that one before. You beat me. <laughs> um, so he said, "Give us five minutes." He said, "I'll call the guy who prepped him in the warehouse." He said, "He's our boffin." Yeah. And sure enough, he knew the issue. But um, he said, basically, once in a thousand times of turning them on, roughly, um, it'll forget it's something to do with networking, and it just won't accept uh, or, or give out uh, anything. Uh, you know, an IP, so you can't connect Crazy. to it. You can't. Yeah, you can reset it. It'll cause you an absolute nightmare to like get it all set back up again. But we tried turning um, it off and on again. Yeah. Oh, we did all that. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, it makes you doubt other things in the chain, and you can waste yeah, a quarter yeah. of an hour before checking 50, an XLR uh, cable that's miles away from the actual problem. Exactly. Um, um, yeah. So uh, one of the other issues I've had is uh, where somebody has taken off the um, little cable pull. Yeah, uh, like gland that's inside the uh, the behind the screw cap. Um, so when you push in the uh, the Ethercon, the uh, unbin on the Cat Five uh, connector inside just goes in, and um, you've not got any connection. Um, so yeah, that's a good one that uh, will uh, kick you in the ass. Um, yeah, and, and um, yeah, so it's 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 just I think if it's been used for like video or stuff like that, I don't know why you'd need to take yeah. it off, but. Every now and again, someone does. So, yeah, sometimes um, don't take barrels to site. You need to go into a standard switch that hasn't got an Ethercon in. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, the issue I've had a few times. You have to take the, the uh, Ethercon jacket off and then kind yeah. of put it back together at the end of the gig, which obviously doesn't always happen. Yeah, Which is it. very annoying, but I'm, uh, yeah, definitely guilty of it a few times, sadly. Um, yeah, so then my kind of second Dante issue, which it wasn't Dante, so I'm not pointing the finger here, um, but uh, certainly a word of warning is um, I started seeing on the front of house desk uh, once I got everything patched in that day uh, and my show file recalled. Yeah. Um, I could see on the screen graphically that uh, I was receiving signal for that specific uh, preamp uh, and, and other ones that I clicked on. But um, I wasn't seeing any of my VU meters on each channel uh, flashing and subsequently yeah, yeah. I wasn't able to send anything to PA. But you patched um, between the, the um, but, Dante input and the Dante and the channel, hadn't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. It was the same show file as the week previous, um, but uh, it wasn't um, it wasn't just coming up. So I just thought to quickly check and it seems like when I had first connected, I would have had uh, a decent enough connection for it to be okay and, yeah. and and it seems like i'm not too sure but yeah it seems like once we'd actually started loading up uh, noise wise um it it had just not been uh, able to um keep a gigabit connection um oh, so really? the, the, the bandwidth in, yeah, wasn't yeah. good enough so the in-house lines were um were squishing it down um and not giving me a full uh, connection and um that's that's the issue that it it throws up so yeah Crazy. i just had it yeah so gigabit, um, gigabit error and um, and no VU meters on, a, on any of the channels. Bizarre. So, yeah, yeah, pretty weird. Hmm. Did we? Um, and yours, uh, the Maddie. 
Maddie. Maddie, Maddie. Gotta love Maddie. I love Maddie, but I use Digico quite a bit. And yeah. then um so I've had a few issues on Maddie, but it's not been Maddie's fault. So per se, it's been um people. So I was doing an NHS conference in Manchester yeah. and running Maddie from the, the desk to the Sage Box at G Max, yeah, which is now yeah. temporary hospital, sad to say. Um yeah. And 10 minutes before the show is meant to start with the main keynote speaker of the day kind of thing. So it kind of started with the keynote and then like died down as the day went on kind of vibe um, rather than built up to it. Um, one of the guys from the venue turned up and was like, oh, I need to put tablecloths on all the tables or that's what I've been told. Yeah. And I wasn't at the desk because I was having the last minute wee before you sit there for three hours kind of vibe and came back and the the Maddie wasn't even plugged into the desk. The desk had a tablecloth under it, even though it was behind a crew hide and was pretty well hidden from everyone. Yeah. Like in a nice corner tucked away. So there's no need for it to be touched. And uh plugged it all back in and Maddie wasn't working and uh <laughs> looked at it and it was like, oh, like right angles and like the thing was broken. So I plugged it in and could get sound from the desk, so like local inputs out to the speakers through the amps and yeah. stuff. But the the mics backstage, i.e. the crucial bit, yeah. I couldn't get from that stage box, same stage box, all the way back to the desk and then back through, obviously, which is a really weird one that I had. So uh, I uh, got someone to run, to run a temporary cable of Maddie while I recrimped the ends. And I think we pretty much finished. He ran the cable about the same time across the floor and gaffed it down as it took me to recrimp the end and put it back in. Oh, and my. like two minutes before we were due to start, we started and it was amazing um yeah got away with having no background music for that just as well really lucky, <laughs> lucky yeah i mean had it taken me any longer or gone for a bit longer at the toilet or it was just like one of those things you just can't believe yeah. someone's done on the show live day they've taken the sound desk on the keynote theater to pieces to put a yeah. fucking tablecloth on absolutely yeah. jokers so what would yeah. you regard as the most challenging part of sound engineering? For me, I've put keeping the client happy when they want something that's either not physically possible, like less drums in like yeah. a tiny room where it's coming through all the vocal mics, yeah. or like not correcting your personal professional opinion on a gig. Yeah. Like, I want this over here right now. And it's like, well, no, because I'm doing this, this, and this for you that's actually yeah. more important. Or a client that thinks they're a sound engineer. Or a client that thinks they're a sound engineer. Yeah, 100%. What uh, about you? I've had that the other time. Most challenging um, part? I think the most challenging part is sometimes actually working with so many different types of people. Yeah. Um, I try and keep quite a friendly, happy person. Yeah. You uh, said earlier that it's like we, we do a new job every day, don't we? Yeah. Um, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, Lewis. I'm sure he'll tune in at some point to watch this. Yeah. Um, he basically the analogy he puts is that that we basically have we start a new job every every few days. You know, um, I think it's new so kit, new environment, yeah. new people, uh, new challenges. Yeah. Uh, and it's it is actually so true. We've just got to be multifaceted, um, very you know clued up or well experienced. Hundred percent. Um, and able to work with uh with whatever we've got in front of us um yeah. you know and and make uh what's the saying um make uh uh a something out of a sow's ear um have you ever heard of that no uh i'm gonna have to find this out now i'm <laughs> oh, so sorry but yeah no it's cool it's so true though um like go from gig to gig even though, like, I took, like, this time last year, I worked 47 days straight back to back for four different production companies um, with, like, 96 different members of crew. Like, every yeah. gig, I did, like, two or three days with one company and then two or three days with another. Totally yeah. different people each time, totally different gear, totally different location in the UK or Europe, um, yeah. totally different bands, desks cable colors yeah. on the cable lengths oh, like some God. people use red as one meter some people use red as 20 meters yeah that's Thing, it. little things like that and it's just like then you ask them oh is red 20 meters and they look at you like you're an absolute idiot it's like yeah sorry that i haven't worked for you in two years yeah and this 15 <laughs> yeah definitely looks like this 20 yeah exactly um, it's hilarious yeah. isn't but it? yeah um it's uh, making a silk purse out of a sow's ear and obviously a sow is a pig so out of a pig's yeah, ear yeah 
Um, so yeah, no, but I, I'd say, I think one of the cha most challenging things I'd say is working with people. Um, and I always kind of stand by, I'd never ask someone to do something that I wouldn't be prepared to do myself, which is kind yeah, of yeah. a nice little, um, thing, you know, uh, and if someone doesn't want to do it, just go, cool. Yeah. It's also like treat others yeah. as you want to be treated, basically. Yeah. Like if you're not happy so. doing it yourself, why would you ask someone else to do it? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Cool. Hundred percent. Should we move on and talk about favorite mic for vocals yeah. and kick and snare and guitar? I mean, yeah. you could use one mic for all of them if you hundred percent want to, but yeah. Favorite vocal mic. Let's go for that. Um, oh, I've had the pleasure of working with the KSM nine. Oh, beautiful just mics. Beautiful mic. Um, and uh, following that, actually, a, a very similar mic in some in some ways. Um, a Lewitt, uh, I, uh, yeah, I've yeah. heard of. I've not worked with. But There's certainly plenty of emails Lewitt do. Yeah, Lewitt MTP, so Mike Tango Papa 940. It's a condenser, okay. one-inch diaphragm um, uh, microphone used on vocals. Yeah. Uh, and this particular um, singer, she is very quiet. when she, She's just very dynamic. Um, but the problem is, is they often, this particular band often play small, uh, quite small, well, small stages, quite, uh, yeah. um, uh, want, I want to say one to one, come on, Connor, um, quite, uh, personal venues, uh, with the audience. And yeah. so often she's sat with the drums right behind her, um, not yeah, those the, are the nightmare not, gigs. Not the drummer drums, to blame, everywhere. but there's so many dynamics. Uh, it's, on, it's so much dynamics in, in the pieces that they play. Um, and her vocals can either just get lost or um, or there's just so much spill uh, of, of drums from behind her. Yeah. Now, this Lewitt, um, I've seen it in action, uh, but thank, well, unfortunately not engineered it. Um, that if, if she's any more than a few inches away from it, it just falls off like a cliff. You just don't hear anything. Uh, and if she's off Ideal. axis as well, um, it, it's, it's silent. Um, I deal so, with yeah, right on it. technique, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, she didn't like it at first. Um, but my God, it's, it's stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, uh, gorgeous microphone. So yeah, that's a Lewitt. So yeah, vocal. Um, again, I've, I've had a play on the Accent system uh, with yeah, a yeah. KSM 9 head. Um, Beautiful. Uh, on uh, When doing the wireless masterclass. Yeah. Uh, not seen it in a wireless form other than that, because uh, I think at the time it was the first head that there was that was in the UK. Oh, sure. Um, but uh, got to have a look at it. So, yeah, so I've just I've just been lucky to to, uh, to see one uh, and have a play with it um, actually on show, which is cool. What would you say for a uh, vocal? Um, vocal microphone. I mean, I, the ones I've listed are the ones that I own. So for favorite, <laughs> yes, no, I don't actually own any 58s. Look at me. Uh, uh, I've put D6 for kick, um, snare, I've put beta 57 or an i5. Um, guitar, I've put beta 57, i5, or a Kemper because a load of bands I work with now, Kemper, Axe FX, Helix. It's actually yeah. just like stereo jack in, uh, stereo yeah. XLR in kind of vibe, yeah. which is actually much better for stage noise. Yeah. Um, vocals, I've got i5 and beta 57. Ooh, lovely on female vocals, the uh, yeah. beta 57. And the yeah. i5 is so crisp. It's got a nice yeah. top end. Um, yeah. It's obviously wired, but. I think not... the beta 57 is just, yeah, it is, it is a special microphone that you yeah. can, yeah, you, you can actually pretty much. Put it on most things, and you know, stick it down the throat of a, a saxophone. Yeah. And you know, uh, same with the trumpet, same with uh, a trombone. You know, it's good for it's good for wind. It's good for your snare. Um, so versatile, isn't it? It is very versatile for you know for for just one microphone. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly dynamically, it's uh, a great uh, yeah great dynamic microphone. What would you do? Have you got any experience with condensers? Because, like, I'm thinking on, um, you know, uh, uh, mine's gone blank. <laughs> uh, like a Sennheiser um, 2000 series, um, like the 965 head. Yeah, yeah. Um, use 965. Use the wide versions as well. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I've not 
got much experience with any anything wired of uh, Sennheiser. It's uh, it's I'm actually on wireless. an I'm on a um yeah eight eight three five today eight three five yeah yeah sounds yeah. sounds pretty good. I've got an eight four five um, over there as well, which has got a switch on it. Yeah, eight three five is what comes as the as the standard, standard kit head. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's a lovely it's a sounding mic, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. But uh, most of my experience with the rock and roll, um, one particular job that I do on a month by month basis, well, not anymore. Um, we opted for nine four five heads, so the hypercardioid yeah. dynamic uh, on on the wireless systems, um, and it's great, absolutely stunning. I think mm. the guy that I that, that work for has just recently bought some nine six five heads. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I currently don't have any experience uh, in a loud uh, rock and roll environment uh, with the nine six five head, but uh, corporate wise, it was actually sweet, mm. a really sweet head uh, yeah, to yeah. use. I took the lid off it, and it's uh, it's all like like a it's got like a bucket, like a silver. It's uh, nice. So it's really nice, yeah. Back so, when um, Sennheiser G two was like the uh, head, the um, latest thing on the block from Sennheiser. Um, yeah. I worked for a company who did loads of outdoor events with wedges that were massively loud, yeah. and they specced the condenser heads rather than the dynamic head for the vo- for the row for the blah, for the vocalists. And so we had down? two rappers and a singer in the band on loud wedges and it was noticeably more feedback using the condenser heads over using the dynamic heads. It was yeah. insane how bad yeah. it was compared. And after like two gigs, they swapped them. They just went to Wigwam and took them straight back pretty much. And really? Like, yeah, let's take these back. I mean, half of that was down to stupidly loud wedges and stuff and yeah, whatever, but yeah. wedges were rang out and stuff, but just had really, I mean, it was a small stage, but had loads of issues with it, like even when they like. And what kind of pickup were... pattern are they? I think they were hypers back in the day, but yeah. I mean I haven't looked even into still. it. I mean I'm on video now, so everything I say is gospel. But I haven't looked into it. I've just literally remembered that off the top of my head. Comment of below. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Leave me a comment below if you can remember. Yeah, so I'll back you up on the D6. Uh, D6 yeah. is a really good show. Um, I'm not a fan of when... the D112 really. Not gonna lie. No. Like the ninety one, the um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of the Beta fifty twos. Um, we, Sorry. yeah, the ninety one that we had. Um, unfortunately, you know, the, some companies that you work with that you do most of your good stuff, they don't have the budget to be buying things left, right, and centre. And unfortunately, he lost the uh, the ninety one cable and little preamp. Oh XLR. no! You can buy them. Yeah, oh. you can. They're a fortune, aren't they? If I remember rightly. They may have gone or, down in price now. Yeah. Or, or a certain, st- yeah, I think they were a good, they were a good chunk of money. So, and unfortunately, whatever he looked into, I think we. Just, so we've just got the ninety one that is XLR straight into it, 91A, rather than, yeah. Rather than, I mean, the, that's, uh, that would be what I would small. buy now personally, just because of ease of yeah. use and la- yeah. less things to lose, I guess. Yeah, yeah, um, and then yeah, so yeah, again, beat a fifty seven for um, on on snare and guitar and. Surprisingly, I I just have a, te- a tendency to like the six oh four Sennheiser a uh, little clip yeah. on. Um, it's got loads of uh, clarity and attack to it. Yeah. So uh, every now and again, if I've got a, like a snappy first rack tom or a snare yeah. or um, even that job that you saw me on, we put it on. We put yeah, it on me and you put it vocals. on drum vocals. It's like and super it, low profile mic, and it sounded it just, great. It, it it sang okay. It needed a good bit of EQ, yeah, but yeah, that 100%. was I think that was more the actual enclosure that the band was in. Yeah. You know, super reflective uh, polyurethane sheet uh, and like a shipping container. Inside. Essentially, yeah, it was a it? shipping container. That's what it is. And um, but my god, it was uh, it was on the money. It was great. Yeah. Uh, but like you say, yeah, really low profile, uh, ninety degree, and um, it to be fair probably did a better job than anything else that was on the stage at the time anything else that was in that pack at least yeah 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 yeah, yeah that was it again what you provided with um and love one snare some... bottom as well you can just clip it straight on and yeah just hangs neatly underneath um nice little uh cable tidy you know clip on the yeah, back exactly. of the, for your xlr so the thing the audix uh clip-ons are missing i use dts and d4s all the time but yeah. they don't have the the, oh, the ones with the, the goosenecks mounts. as well yeah yeah the mounts are terrible compared in my opinion yeah it's um not even really a strong clip is it not like i'm not messing ideal. i'm messing with this at the minute which is from my um manfrotto 
camera yeah. stand. And to be fair, that's got more of a, a hold on a microphone than uh, than most <laughs> Audics have. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I think uh, yeah uh, yeah. Further into that is uh, the Earthworks series. Um, sure. Obviously, speaking on this microphone now, it's just uh, an Earthworks. Uh, it's actually my measurement microphone. It's an M thirty. <laughs> um, but. Uh, the Audix series. Um, Living the lockdown life with everything else in the lockup, yeah. I, yeah, all, yeah. Your, all your mics are locked away and you can't get to them because of the I, uh, quarantine. I actually don't own much kit. Um, yeah, I've uh, I've tried to stay away from buying stuff, but um, if I was to buy a drum mic set or a vocal mic set or something like yeah. that, and I really had the money because they, they're not cheap, I'd probably look no, at getting no. like Earthworks. So then sure. when I actually had that job i could take them out on it would just they'd just be worthwhile you know they'd be sure. um they did make up for costing so uh, yeah that's fair i mean i take my <laughs> i5 and d6 at any gig for a certain yeah. company that don't have very good drum mics and yeah. as soon as i know there's a band coming even if it's not a band that has a drummer they're mm -hmm. in my pelly or in my rucksack and they're always there yeah just because i yeah. know that i don't want to use a pg52 i'd rather use the d6 that i could have bought from home yeah, yeah. 100%. True, true. Um, what's your favourite audio position to work in? So there's obviously front of house, monitors, patch, RF tech, system tech, or broadcast. What's your favourite? Um, I love front of house. Sure. Um, but I'm, I'm happy doing most of it. I'm not, I've, I'll be honest, I've not system teched much. Sure. Um, you could say in theory I was system teching in, in, in a way when i used to set up pa and the amplifiers and everything yeah, exactly. but it was i was i was an underling so um it was only like yeah that's plugged in uh and if there were any issues I'd, I'd jump on the issues but um so far as um setting up the system i yeah. wasn't that that wasn't me um but yeah definitely uh, rf definitely uh patched um and then obviously monitors in front of us i yeah. do enjoy and there is a particular gig I do this on again quite frequently. Um, is doing front of house and monitors from side of stage. Sure. Because you you you're with the band. You're close to the energy. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. Um, Get that. And and yeah, you can still be in that position. So I just go out front on my iPad, um, and and then obviously I'm not not in front of the speakers. Um, you know where the where the live bit is uh, all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and you still feel close to the band, and I can I can see each one of them. Yeah, you okay? Cool. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. yeah, he's all right. You know what I mean? And you get you get everyone talking to you, and there's I think there's a bit more uh, fluidity to it um, when when you're in that position, as you would be with a monitor engineer. So yeah, yeah, yeah um, kind of front of house from side of stage. But anyway, yeah, I was just watching huh? the Dave Rat thing just recently with his Heritage Three Thousand. How yeah. he how um, he mixes sideways on. Um, yeah, yeah, he stands facing the signal floor. Stands um, facing the stage, but his desk's off yeah. to one side, isn't it? Yeah, He's stunning. Like mixing sideways. I've, I've seen that video like years ago, but yeah. just recently watched it again, and I just like it is. He comes up with some really cool uh, ways of making you think differently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he can just see the whole, and he just stands there. You know, as a, he can either stand there as a punter or just. With his right hand, and he knows where he is on the desk. It's like a blind man reading braille. Yeah, um, muscle memory. Just, it, it's more of a feel than a than a visual. Oh, that graphic looks horrible. And I think that's that's the thing with obviously the uh, the analog to the digital desks is, yeah. You've, all of a sudden, you've got this visual representation of uh, of uh, oh, that doesn't look. Does nice. it look yeah, right? But yeah, but does it sound it's, right? It's yeah, exactly. Um, so many times there's a. Um, those 945 heads, uh, yeah. a few times I've I've seen my high pass filter like 320, sure. 350, 380 hertz kind of thing. And you've not even noticed because you're just winding it in and you're still getting a bit of, like, you're still getting a bit of bottom more, end in it. More. And then you've looked down and gone, whoa, what the hell? Yeah. And not that I've lost control of where it is. And then you take it out again and then you're like, oh no, it was in the right place. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. You kind of doubt yourself because I can all of a sudden visually see that it's uh, it's in the wrong place. Well, yeah, it's not in the wrong place. It's If it's just if it's, if it's working where it is, then yeah, leave exactly. it where it is. 100%. Um, I'd rather mix 10 mixes for each individual person than mix one mix 
one stereo mix for a crowd of 10,000 people. Oh, wow. Vibe. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm just more, I like doing monitors and patch yeah. stuff. I like being on the stage where the action is. Yeah. Like in patch, you have like a certain amount of time, say two minutes to change over a band or whatever and get all everything correct the first time round. Yeah. Um, but I just don't enjoy, I mean, I do plenty of front of house work. I just don't enjoy it in the same way. Yeah. yeah. That's why you, when you commented on that picture that time, uh, when I've got my Rubik's yeah. cube on the side of my desk, cause yeah, yeah. Um, you're like, I, what do you do in a stage changeover with a Rubik's cube? And I'm like, change the band yeah. over and change the patch. I, I was lucky that it was, uh, we'd already set and, um, we were on the next, uh, we were already set up for the next artist, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, front of house engineer most of the time just sits back in his recliner chair and until he's there's no point in him trying to work his way through the crowd to come change a couple of mics around yeah, until yeah. his comms flash and then oh, he jumps he up and he's snapshot. ready now <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so but um change the snapshot on the desk and yeah. uh, make fun of the lampy makes, and then carry makes on makes a coffee yeah exactly get hills uh, the lampy abuse yeah that's yeah the one. 100%. That's the one. <laughs> uh what about wedges versus in ears um I think a nice amount of both. Um, I think uh -huh. they definitely both have a place. Um, 100%. Uh, in ears, if I, if it was me, because I have performed in a band quite for an, uh, for a number of years as keyboards um, and vo sang vocals at the same time. Um, sure. If I had the choice now, and I, say for instance we were going to we were taking to the road and there was money behind it. I definitely I like yeah. the idea of those ACS customs where um sure. you've got the little port um the filter. with a little filter yeah, yeah. on um because I'm all for wearing earplugs I'd say I've got mine here but I've moved them earlier I've I've, I've got my uh, smart system set up so I'm a bit fed up of hearing pink noise at the minute <laughs> but um yeah so uh, a set of ACS custom molds um with a port uh obviously you've got your IEMs coming in with the money frequent, you know, with the money sound coming in yeah, your yeah. vocal, if it's your vocal or keys or whatever you whatever you're playing, um, but then I think a nice level of wedge, um, giving that um, the power, you know, that you can feel uh, yeah. feel hitting you. Um, certainly, if you're a vocalist, um, it's good to feel the sound as well as hear it. But I'm I'm all for for keeping stages quiet. So if it needs to be in ears, because there's so many mics on stage. There's, you know, 20, 30, maybe more microphones. Yeah, in ears. And obviously being wireless yeah. as well. Um, if you're a guitarist with a wireless pack on uh, for your guitar, then <laughs> there's no reason why you couldn't be wireless for your in ears and uh, yeah, uh, and uh, doing that way. So, yeah. Right, how do you feel? Oh, a similar kind how of How about me? I do the higher tour, which we are pushing all guitar amps, all basses all well drum kits use spdx and actual drum kits yeah. so drum kit is literally the only thing that's loud on stage spdx is di'd um kemper and sans di for the bass kind of vibe helixes and kempers for the guitars yeah. and vocals are obviously vocal you can hear them yeah. um and then everyone's on in-ears um everyone's wireless in-ears apart from drummer and everyone's on wireless vocal mics as well um, to run around the stage and do whatever they want to do. Um, and then we use a butt kicker. Have you come across that? Yeah, I've done quite a lot of um, blues. For drums. Uh, quite a lot of blues festivals. We used to do two a year. Uh, butt kickers yeah. were, were, were frequented. Um, yeah. Love them. Great. I wish I had one personally for mo like monitors and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just sit there with it on myself. Yeah. It'd be great. Um, <laughs> So, and then we just do, um, we've got a stereo pair of wedges across the front of the stage. So one mix, two wedges, yeah. um, just like spread evenly across the stage, just for like backing dancers and stuff. So they don't have to be on in ears. Yeah. And that really works very well. Keeps all the stage noise down, gives front of house as much um, range, I guess yeah. is the correct word, yeah. uh, as we can possibly give them dynamically. Yeah. So they're not fighting with monitors. Exactly. Um, do other bands and they they want their wedges super loud and then from a front of house position you're just fighting exactly, all the time exactly. so many function bands they're like oh more 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 yeah. like people you've never worked with before and because he's had more he needs more now yeah yeah exactly it. becomes very messy and the dfa fader does so much on those gigs yeah. I'm not gonna lie. yeah exactly or 
set it up how they want it in soundcheck and then turn it down a little bit yeah. as yeah. we start. Or I need more, so, so I, I, all you do yeah, is yeah. leave his vocal the same and just pull everything else back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. You don't actually need as much as you think you no. do, but, I mean, that's where in is such a lifesaver now. Yeah. I mean, 20 years ago, I mean, even five years ago, wasn't yeah. so uh, mainstream, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, cool. final question that I've got written down, but we can obviously cover some more. What is your favorite tool in your toolkit or Peli case? Um, favorite tool in my Peli case? Uh, I've got many. Many, obviously. Um, actually, I've got a few more since we last spoke. Um, awesome. I think the first one that I instantly go to are the um, the sound tools um, sniffer senders. Sure. Um, yeah, Dave yeah, Ratz. Yeah. yeah. Dave Ratt's uh, little sound tools. Um, oh my God, it's so helpful, so yeah. handy. Um, and you can just, okay, I, th I think the quality of the uh, the female uh, end of the XLR one, uh, I think he could have used a better connector on the female uh, oh, XLR. Um, I know, I know. Um, I think it's quite a cheap, it's quite a cheap connector and, uh, and uh, cli uh, you know, latching uh, uh, switch for yeah. it, but, um, the actual use of the tool is brilliant. Um, sure. Now, this is really sad. If you've got um, a 1535 uh, Air or yeah, a, yeah. a 1510, the actual transfer sticker that they give with the uh, XLR sniffer sender fits between the catch, um, fits between the catchers, you know, the actual like lift up catchers. Yeah, so yeah. you can put it um, on, in, the, in the two tram the lines that come down. Yeah. And it won't get, it sh it shouldn't get damaged uh, with where the plastic is. Nice. Um, I've got other so, stuff uh, there, I'm afraid. So yeah, it, it actually fits in that little gap without cutting in to cut down or anything. But um, yeah, I've got um, so I've got the NL4 sniffer sender and oh, I've got cool. the XLR three pin nice. sniffer sender. Nice. Yeah, I've seen the XLR one. Um, I've seen the NL4. Yeah, the NL4 one is machined. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, nice. That actually just came recently, so it's not been on a job yet, but. Um, I look forward to seeing a video review of it that will be going up on my channel, hint, hint. Uh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you've got both of them um, and I don't, so I'd look forward yeah. to seeing that review. Yeah. Um, so if if, if the uh, the XLR one's been as useful uh, as it has been, then the NL4, I think actually the NL4 could prove to be even more useful because sure. I've been on numerous jobs where, why is this NL4 not? something's not right and you've you've tested it or something or discovered it to be uh pin swapped and yeah yeah why is it not even labeled up you know uh, a job just recently uh People i did don't know how to and and there was there was a few meter a few one meter lengths and half of them were pin swaps and half of them were just links and honestly there was no difference absolutely not not not, not even thickness in cable um because i think sometimes you could do if it's like a two core pin swap, you can just use an you know a, a two core cable, yeah, yeah, um, and just change it at each end. So so there's a visual like difference, but uh, like four core pin swaps and four core cable that all look the same is just lethal. So yeah, um, just quickly blast it um, and find out which cores what. Um, so yeah, so that's one little tool. I think another little tool of uh, more for AV side of stuff is. Um, is a little uh, wireless keyboard, um, nice. which is uh, I can send you I can send you some pictures to put up. Yeah. Uh, but a little wireless keyboard, eighteen quid, and it's so handy. Um, there was a job I did just at the XL actually. It was my penultimate job before. ICE. This. Um, yeah, it was ICE, yeah. um, and I had a totem with uh, a TV with a screen portrait mounted on it and a laptop underneath it uh, hidden inside. Yeah. And all I did was left the little uh, USB dongle uh, inside the laptop. I didn't turn anything off other than the screen every day. Uh, yeah. It's like a five day event. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and all I, d all I needed to do to change the presentation or to do any adaptions, uh, I just needed to turn on the little Bluetooth sender for the keyboard. And I'm I'm on it. I don't need to tip. I don't They've need to tip it back. It's got a little trackball to... mouse built into it. Uh, it's got a little well. touchpad. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll send you the link to it if anyone's nice. interested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as I say, eighteen quid, and it's worth its weight in gold. Absolutely stunning. But I'll I'll be doing a full talk uh, for you. Um, Amazing. And 
Um, you've been waiting long enough. Um, <laughs> so, no excuses. Um, so, yeah, with its weight in gold, and it fits really well in the same Peli case as the Stream Deck. Yeah. Um, Stream Deck's uh, one yeah. of my favourite tools. Um, yeah. Stream Deck. I've got a lot of work to do on my Stream Deck. Um, since I've got Smart properly, uh, bought Smart. Um, yesterday, I, in fact. Yesterday, in fact. I'm li literally looking at the icon right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna set it up because uh, actually I've not set up my uh, my stream deck since I first got it. Um, so yeah, it's I'm gonna I'm gonna have a separate uh, like uh, time capture stuff, uh, smart and uh, different uh, view windows because I'm gonna run. I'm actually gonna get myself uh, a secondary screen. I'm not looking at getting a touch screen because I don't. Yeah. You could argue I need it, but I just yeah I try and keep it down to a minimum. Yeah. Um, Did you see uh, the video I sent you earlier? Wise. Um, on WhatsApp. Yes, I did. I, I already used that. Yeah. Sorry, I, I I was confused. Yeah, I I already do. I already do the yeah, uh, different uh, def desktop views and and uh, and whatnot. But yeah, um, it's a good shout. Um, thanks, thank thank you anyway for that. That's all right. But um, yeah. So I run a second screen, and then I can just keep my smart on it. If it's a, if I've got a CL five, which I do. I'm seeing more on on the jobs that I'm doing. Um, yeah, yeah. You've just got a perfect little area there where I can set up. Yeah. Um, you know your secondary screen, so you've got, uh, you've got your um, smart analysis going into it all the time, um, and then anything else. But yeah, my stream deck is great. Uh, got different, few different views. Uh, again, I can show you what it looks like when I do my uh, my walkthrough of my uh, Peli. Um, so yeah, that's another great tool. Um, let's just have a think. Go on, I'll have a think whilst you say what 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 do you find your uh, oh, most mate. useful? Uh, um, so I've got a tool. UMIK one, which is a USB reference mic. So it has a calibration yeah. file built into it. So yeah, it's, uh, booty calibrated for SPL and um, in terms of frequency, mm -hmm. uh, which is lovely. So it's I do actually have a Presonus reference mic. I think it's called PRM one. Yeah, uh, off the top of my head, and a focus right audio interface that I used to take around, which is similar to what you do now with your Earthworks mic in your hand. Yeah, and your, so um... I originally had this DBX RTAM, yeah. um, and it's great. It's in its uh, it's in its use. Uh, it's pretty beat up, um, but yeah, I, I just decided to go with the Earthworks. Sure. Um, it was a, a once in a lifetime purchase that I wanted to make, and yeah, they're, they're like seven seven hundred quid something yeah. like that. Well, um, these are like 700 quid, which are another favourite of yeah, mine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Custom mould, six drivers, totally flat. Yeah. Well, the flattest they make kind of vibe. Um, yeah. From Cosmic Ears in Manchester. So nice local mm -hmm. company to us. Yeah. Um, support local business, all that jazz. 100%. Um, sound amazing. 100%. Really love them. Yeah. Can't fault them. Yeah. Great, great customer service. Got yeah. my own little logo on it. Can't. That's can't, the one. Can't complain. I think that's a good question as well. Is the um, uh, speaking about the Peli case, what we've got in it, custom molds, generics. Yeah. I've not needed to go like full out uh, getting custom molds, sure. other than earplugs, because I, I absolutely swear by earplugs. Yeah. I wear earplugs I wear driving. Earplugs, yeah. um, uh, I wear earplugs uh, driving uh, with the mileage that I do, like 25,000 25, So much road noise. Um, it, it's basically it's um like you've not got jet lag uh when you arrive there um yeah it's a good way of looking at it and uh, i do a lot of uh i go down surfing to cornwall uh down to Niki where i've got a lot of family yeah and um it must have been 10 years ago now i can't believe i've been driving 12 years <laughs> uh but it must have been 10 years ago now where um i started wearing earplugs uh and and i was getting there all of a sudden not feeling like i've just been in a aircraft for you know for five six hours yeah. uh, however long it takes um and yeah so earplugs just i uh, went from just the usual disposable orange 3m ones to uh to custom molds and i can change the filter not that i've changed the filter for driving but um uh yeah i think i think they're brilliant but yeah um molded it i am i've just not needed it i've got um uh sure eight four sixes yeah. um and they've been stunning the only are they four trouble drives? i have they're they're a four driver yeah yes yeah quad driver um 
The only trouble I find with them is if I need them any longer than 48 hours uh, consecutively, um, I'll tend to start getting uh, aggravation uh, uh, in my ears. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, uh, not to knock ACS, um, the ACS um, molds that you can get on the uh, uh, musician hearing, not mold, sorry, uh, molded earplugs that you can yeah. get on the musician's hearing scheme, which um, please put a link below. Um, it's absolutely great uh, scheme to get yourself a, a set of custom plugs for 40 quid. Uh, I think they're like two hundred odd. Test and yeah, the free hearing test. test. Uh, uh, it's brilliant. Great scheme. Um, I've got them, um, and after a good while, because I know they sized up a few percent from the molds that are taken. Sure. Um, I uh, I do find a bit of aggravation. So, um, but that's just me. You know, every everyone's different. Uh, ACS uh, are, are probably the best com com company in the country. It's definitely the most well known. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love my cosmics though. Yeah, up and coming brand, nice yeah. and lovely. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of good things from about cosmic. Good, you should uh, try them out. Awesome, right? That's been amazing. Thank you so much, Connor, for all, all these uh, great insights and answers anytime. to my questions. Um, <laughs> That's cool. Uh, we're looking forward to getting you to do some more content with us. Um, I think we've sure. just, uh, yeah, scratched the surface. Yeah, I think we, yeah, definitely just scratch the surface. But you've got loads of content um, that you can give me that I can't personally provide because you've got the gear for it and stuff like the yeah. sound tool stuff. Yeah. Um, so it'd be great to see some of your reviews of that stuff. Until we see you again on the channel, thank you so much for coming on. Perfect. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you could like and subscribe and leave us a comment, that'd be amazing. Um, otherwise, we'll see you again in another video. Cheers, guys.